how would you compare the education system in the U.S. versus some of the other parts of the world? We are in 27 countries. It's an area of great interest to me. Uh, educational system, by and large, is undergoing tremendous change. Uh, it used to have a lot of nationalistic boundaries. It still does, but I think that boundaries are becoming a little less relevant. U.S. system is quite interesting because if you look at the number of undergraduate students in STEM every year in the country of the United States, we graduate roughly 140,000 kids. Now that's an alarmingly small number compared to the fact that we have 300 million people in the country. So you have to say what happens to the rest of the kids? They're not smart enough? They're not motivated enough? Uh, while businesses need people in thousands, uh, in, in hundreds of thousands, so what's the real gap? So I think the university system might have become a little too difficult, in some cases out of touch with what's really needed. You see that phenomenon in the U.S. I see some somewhat similar uh, phenomenon around the world where their curriculums are the educational, instructional medium for education moves at a much smaller pace than the evolution of the content. So you're teaching something that was 30 years ago has almost no relevance to what is going on today and certainly has no relevance 10 years from now after you, t after you learn it. So there's a big chasm between the two. So the educational system is changing. So things like Khan Academy and things more revolutionary where one-to-one -one learning, democratic learning where you can share the content, you can u create use of content for learning and using multimedia facilities uh, effectively so you don't have to be constrained in the traditional classroom using virtual reality. So here's an example. Stanford um, had, had an open course in computer science uh, that was done, I think, a few years ago. It was open, and they expected less than 1,000 students to apply. 180,000 180, students applied. It's interesting, the staff of computer science, most of the kids who were graded, whose papers were graded, the top grades belong to kids sitting in Africa and India and other places of the world. So it kind of tells you that the way educational system is going to be delivered in the future is going to fundamentally change. So I see this all over the world. So these are some of the things that you think can help bridge the skills gap. Absolutely. There was a big chasm between the universities and the academic world and the business and the government. This is changing slowly because most presidents of uh, countries now are they have a specific policy for human capital development and there usually is a high-ranking official in charge of it. There are policies that are formulated specifically for the kinds of things we are talking about like spotting talent gap. There are uh, local governments in the United States, many states, uh, many cities have a coalition between businesses and educational institutions at local levels to fill the gap. So you, the attempt is made. So the first thing is the awareness of the attempt is made. And the second thing is to make education more available, you needed the whole technological aspect. And that just happened with the advent of cell phones, internet, and that's why it's so exciting because, again, just because a kid is born in New York to a wealthy family versus some kid in Lyon in Mexico, they have pretty much equal access to education in the future. And that's my dream. I mean, that's happening right in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm.